Hi guys, welcome back. So today I want to be talking about a bit of a, 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 I say a weird console. Now, yeah, as you know, as you probably gathered, it's the Atari Jaguar. Very strange console, maybe. Now, my opinion, no. Um, actually, um, well, when this first came out, right about 1993, I won't bore you with the details of everything else, but it boasted 64 bits. Now, Bear in mind, let's go back to 993. We've got the Mega Drive, and the Mega Drive is running down a bit. And the Super Nintendo is, you know, some of the really good games are coming out. They come out with the FX chip. Um, so you've got things like Star Fox, Stunt Race FX, Doom. And uh, Atari decided we're going to do our cartridge based console. And they came up with a uh, 64 bit, you know, do the math. I get it. Uh, so there was uh, uh, some of the games, I, I knew one person one person had this um and uh i didn't know anyone else and i remember going around to a friend's house and seeing it being demonstrated it was showing me one of the games well it got a few games it got like doom um iron soldier tempest uh but yeah i remember it playing doom and it, i thought yeah i'd not really got that much into doom i'd not really seen it much on the pc i'd heard about it but not really seen much about it and like I say, I only knew one guy with this. It wasn't probably the greatest console. Seeing him play Doom, Doom did look good. And Tempest looked great as well. Um, but that was pretty much it. I uh, saw so Iron Soldier. And to be honest, back then, I'm going to have to say, it just reminded me of a console or, uh, you know, that, that could do what the FX chip could do on the Super Nintendo. Just with a slightly bit of better detail, a little bit more power. I wasn't impressed. I wasn't impressed at all. It was nothing special. Like I say, um, I, I thought Tempest did look good, but there wasn't many games out there that were really great for it. And say 64 bit, this was supposed to be four times more powerful than the Super Nintendo in the Mega Drive. I was not, you know, chuffed at all. I didn't, you know, it was expensive, 200, 250. <clears throat> now you could uh, get the Super Nintendo. The Super Nintendo had gone down to probably like 129.99 at this stage in the Mega Drive with Sonic for 100 uh, for 99.99, uh, or you could buy the 64-bit Atari Jaguar for 249.99. No, I wasn't. I wasn't impressed at all. It didn't impress me at all. Uh, like I say, seeing it play Doom and seeing and, and like the Tempest, and that was about the only game. So <clears throat> revisited it. I thought let's have a look let's go back into it and find out so this machine lasted from, uh, from 1993 to 1996 pretty much it was the cd add-on to it it was cartridge based now um the, i think the things that let it down now everyone moans about the joy pad the, it was a big bulky joy pad so like a calculator it got three buttons you'd got a, a very small sort of um, you know, uh, your up and down joy pad sort of thing. It didn't do that much, it, it, you know. Um, and the machine itself actually looked, it did look quite spacey actually. Yeah, they're using it in dentistry now, or they used to use it in dentistry for like some kind of laser teeth removal. I don't know what, <laughs> what they are. So I decided to have a look now. Now this machine, like I say, boasts a 64 bit. It's actually a two 32 bit uh, chips running side by side or, or one for the graphics one for the sound um, and then there's also the Motorola Z80 or whatever chip it is 68800 chip or whatever it is um, and a lot of the people couldn't work out how to program the, th the 232 bit chips running side by side or working together to create excellent graphics so a lot of them just programmed on from the, uh, the Motorola chip instead it was easier it's easier to program and uh, so I, I, I decided to revisit it now. Um, now, another downside as well. Back then, it was just basic RF connection. Um, and, you know, we've got the Super Nintendo that was running on SCAR on the Mega Drive. If you ordered the right connections running on SCAR by this time, we've got the 32X come out. Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't wasn't impressive at all. So um now i go back into it so um now first off first game i'd like to look at um uh, back then uh well skiing and snowboarding or val this is the yeah skiing and snowboarding yeah it's a snowboarding kind of racing kind of game 
not actually that bad. Um, it did release one for the Super Nintendo, but I tend to find this one obviously a bit more power running to it. Not actually that bad at all. Um, and I think that uh, looking back, yeah, I'd say, you know, this is actually not a bad version to play now. You will get some enjoyment out of it, it won't last for hours, but you will get some enjoyment out of it. Now we've also got uh, Theme Park. Now, Theme Park is one of those that you can sit down and play for hours. So they released it on the Mega, uh, no, no, I think it was released on the PlayStation and Saturn, but they've also released it on the Atari Jaguar. And it's not actually that bad. I do find there's some really good parts to it. And um, once you get used to the actual uh, controls, I do find it actually not that bad. Not that bad at all. Um, you know, compared to the PlayStation and the Saturn, yeah, they are slightly better definition or resolution on them but theme park you know if, if you can get it for 30 pound i think it's definitely definitely worth it actually um now uh let's <laughs> talk about the elephant in the room now yeah kasumi ninja <laughs> oh dear apparently this has been probably voted the worst fighting game ever now kasumi ninja um, back then, definitely, it was pants. It was a, a rip-off of Mortal Kombat and it didn't stand up. Nowadays, uh, it's still pants, but I do get a bit of enjoyment out of it, actually. Yeah, on the selection screen, it is a bit choppy. What I mean, a bit choppy, very choppy. Um, and you can't select any of the characters apart from is it Abiki uh, and Suzuki, or whatever his name is, which is pretty much the same guy, just one is orange, one is green. Um, and you, whoever opponent you kill, if you manage to kill them, then you actually do get to play them in the next round if you choose to play them. But overall, uh, looking back now, yeah, I think it's not bad at all. Um, yeah, it's still a bit pants, but I, I do think you do get some enjoyment out of it. Um, now, my next one is uh, Pinball Fantasies. Now, I used to love playing this on the Amiga. It was absolutely fantastic, and as soon as I found out they released it for the Atari Jaguar, I had to get a copy. Uh, so I searched high and low uh, to see if I could find a copy. And this is not a bad version. Yeah, the, the uh, pinball or the ball engineering or dynamics, uh, not as good. It's slightly a bit slower with the ball, um, but I do find that I tend to get a pretty much similar enjoyment out of it. And I do, I really did enjoy this one um, and I definitely recommend it. It is a little bit expensive though, um, but I definitely recommend it if you are a pinball fan. There's about two games, pinball games for the Atari Jaguar. Um, I'm a pinball fantasy man and I do like this as the, the other versions as well. I, I do get on with, but on a console, better than the SNES, I've seen the SNES version, but yeah, I did enjoy playing that one. Now, my next one is, yeah, they did have some puzzle games. Puzzle games for the uh, uh, Atari Jaguar or Jaguar or Jaguar, yeah, Jag Jaguar, Jaguar. Atari Jaguar is we call it in the UK. Um, now my first one is going to be on puzzle games. We've got Flip Out. Now Flip Out is um, you kind of like you've got a grid of uh, nine three by three, and you press the button, they all flip up, and if they all land down uh, and they're not in the right place, it's game over. So you'll flip one up. Uh, or you'll flip them all up and then when some land you'll see some land if they're not flashing you need flipping up to a different position where you last was before you flipped so basically you know you just got to keep getting them all until they are all finally start flashing and then when they all and they flash and they finally land you you know you go on to the next stage and what this one i found i tend to get a bit further and further each time and you can save it as well which i thought was pretty good um and i did find that yeah it was definitely worth it now probably about 40 45 quid uh i think it's probably worth about 30 quid if that um but not a bad game at all not a bad game at all uh my next one dino dudes evolution dino dudes uh this one it came out on the super nintendo which is like cavemen or what i can't remember what it wasn't um it was a completely different name. Now, this one is not bad, actually. It's good graphics, and it is, well, I say good graphics for a 64-bit cartridge uh, machine. No, it's not. Um, but this one I found tend to keep me going. With, you know, it's a puzzle kind of, you've got your cavemen, and you've got to find it. You've got to get to the other end, um, but you can't jump, or unless you've got a spear. If you've got a spear, then you can jump over areas, and you can only climb so far. 
you need your other guys to climb a bit further up to control each of your, your cavemen you press button one two three four or five whichever how many you've got you've only got so many to get through so if they die i think you've got about like 15 cavemen to use so if you if one dies then you've got 14 and 13 and so on they all die it's game over and they can die pretty quickly but i tend to find this one was quite addictive if you've got one of those addictive personalities highly highly recommend it but unfortunately it's going for about 40 50 quid maybe 60 so just you know keep your eye out um but it's worth worth playing eventually um and the next one we're going to go with dragon now this is straightforward on the uh from the mega drive version it's a beat em up one-on-one -on -one beat em up and so, same as the, the super nintendo version i did do a side-by-side -side version on my other channel port versus port um, and you know as you can see the difference i tend to find the super nintendo was the best version but dragon on the uh atari jaguar was uh, you know a pretty good version indeed I, I i it's not bad not the best if you can find it for about 30 pound recommend it it's good to have a quick blast on it and then uh, see how far you can get and get a bit further they've taken out the cutscenes compared to the mega drive and the super nintendo um but not bad not bad at all now we're getting on to the first person shooters oh, apart from that i will have to say uh one last one that i do want to mention as well well not one last one i've got a few more but uh checkered flag now i think 99 percent of people hate this i actually think it's pretty decent a lot of people say it's broken you go around the corner you go swaying into the side yeah you do or you know it's really choppy yeah it can be choppy if you're going full pelt it is choppy and you don't know where you're going um now um i tend to find that i used a certain type of driving and this as soon as i saw that arrow on the road i took my foot off the accelerator and slowed down i didn't break i just slowed down slowly and i could go around the corners pretty quick and i tend to find i had a great great time playing this i did think it was a, a really good version and yeah it's to compete with uh, the 32x um virtual racing now no this is not as good i'll tell you now i'll be honest with you brutally honest it's not as good but i did enjoy this i did enjoy this and like i say you're going around the corner once it gets really fast uh, you, you do find it gets choppy you know there is a, a, a slow down or should we say there's a cruise button so you get up to i don't know 150 mile an hour just keep your finger on the cruise button and you just cruise around i did a little test as well i did i took it down to three laps because you can have up to 10 laps or 99 laps i took it down to three laps and did four five races and uh out of four of them i came first now yeah you could be driving and next minute a car will come behind you and boss you forward and you can just stop in your tracks and it's like ah but i did enjoy this one i did really enjoy this one um and the beauty about this is as well there is uh, with the atari jaguar there are a lot of out there a lot of what we call reproduction cartridges and i've managed to get a steering patch version of checkered flag now this one is a a, a reproduction cartridge but it's a it's a, a blue clear or crystal blue should we say clear that lights up as you plug it in and play it on your atari jaguar um and like it's a steering patch version which helps you steer around the corner better i'll be gonna be honest with you I prefer the original. I prefer the original. The original gives me a bit more challenge. Uh, so, yeah, on that note. So, the last two, yeah, I'm going to mention uh, Wolfenstein 3D. Now, this one, I find that it's like the frame rate is so smooth. This is unbelievably smooth. And I find it's got, it's such a good, obviously, it's before Doom came out. It's such a good game. And the frame rate, absolutely brilliant. Um, compare it to all the others, you got the SNES version, the 3 do version. The 3 do is apparently the definitive version. I found this one was the best one, and I did enjoy this one. It is one of those games that will keep you coming back, um, and you keep going, you know finding more and more secrets. A couple of downsides to it: you can't circle through all of your weapons. You can only do the uh, once you've got you've got pistol, then uh, shotgun. I think it is, and uh, automatic, not automatic, or um, automatic machine gun. Uh, barrel gun whatever you want to call it um and they're the only ones you can cycle through when you get them and then you can there's another one with a flamethrower and you, you can only cycle through the best weapons you can't go back to the pistol which i thought was a bit of a, a downside but not so it doesn't ruin the gameplay at all i did enjoy it 
Um, and I, 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 this one, I do love coming back to have with game on it as well. The music does get a bit annoying every now and then. You're like, oh, I'll just turn the sound down for a bit. You can turn the sound off. But final one has to be uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to get the Atari Jaguar was Doom. Now, some people are going to say, out of all the first-person shooters, some people say it's Wolfenstein 3D, some people say it's Alien vs Predator, some people say it's Doom. I'm going to say I'm going to go with Doom. It's my favourite, one of my favourites on the Atari Jaguar. Would I say it's my best one? I, I don't know, but it's my favourite. It is one of my ultimate big-time favourites. It's in my top three all the time. Yeah, there is no music. I get it. Uh, it only plays music when you hit the end of the level. But this one, I've literally just replayed it again and gone through all the... 24 levels 25 levels um and uh, i didn't tend to find that you know i did enjoy this one this is the very first version i actually played now somebody lent me an atari jaguar the, the guy i said i know one person who lent me an atari jaguar and doom was one of them and i never played doom and so i played uh, this for the first time ever but he told me about god mode i wasn't interested that much in doom but i got a bit of time on my hands so i went through the whole game in god mode so we were like, oh, why is that completely pointless? You get no challenge out of it. Yeah, I didn't. But I got to learn how the maps were, and it actually got me into the Doom games. Because later on, I got my own version. Um, and I'm glad I did it that way first. But now I'm going through without God mode. I love playing it, you know, uh, I love the challenge. Um, and I did enjoy it. I did enjoy it indeed. So, guys, that is uh, some of the games you can get for the Atari Jaguar. It's about 59 so far. I will say that... Um, back in 1993, this machine was pants. It wasn't that good at all. But I am now going to say, as a retro console, looking back, yeah, I think it stands it up in really well. And I think it's definitely a console worth getting. There's people out there who've probably got their own complete collection of it. Um, now, they are going, they are quite expensive. But I will highly recommend, you know, if you can afford one or if you're looking to get one, it's definitely worth getting. I, I, I think it stands out really well now. Definitely, definitely a great console. It, it's got a lot of charm to it. Some of the games, they look, oh, these are a bit pants. But now, with them being retro, they're like 25, 30 years old, say, almost. Yeah, I think it being be, be a retro console, it does stand up really well. So, guys, overall, Tower Jaguar, uh, that's, that's the uh, little review I wanted to do on there. Um, recommend getting one. If you've not got one, absolutely adore the machine now. Back then, I didn't, now I do. So, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.